Konstantin Konshilienko has created a unique book on management in times of war. The book emerged not by choice, but by necessity, following Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. From the beginning of the chaos of war, Konstantin felt compelled to record his thoughts and observations. It grew to become a collection of reflections that shaped and refined his management practices, allowing him and his team to adapt strategies and prepare for unexpected challenges. These notes, based on a brutal and fast-changing reality, transformed into a book forged during the heat of conflict, which forms the basis of today's interview. Welcome to Slick and Curtain. If you enjoy the material we create and, of course, the incredible guests that we have on the channel, please like and subscribe to help more people find out uh, about Ukraine and about our incredible guests. Please also do check out the book, order yourself a copy, and check out as well the incredible Ukrainian charities, the verified charities that we have in the description of the video who are doing absolutely incredible work and absolutely necessary work at this time in Ukraine. Konstantin Kashilenko is a Deputy Minister of Social Policy of Ukraine for issues of digital development, digital transformation and digitization. He has an MBA degree from the Kiev Mikhail Business School and a diploma from the Ukrainian Corporate Governance Academy. Konstantin is an honorary professor at the Alfred Nobel University and is the IBS ANU International Business School, where he lectures on transformational management. Today in the Ukrainian government, Konstantin is responsible for the implementation of the unified information system of the social sphere and the development of online services for Ukrainian citizens. He is joined today as well by Roman Kazyuk, who is his publisher and is going to help explain how the genesis of the book came about. I'm delighted to welcome you both to the channel. Hello. Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Jonathan. Well, let's start with uh, with Konstantin. Uh, so the first question I want to fire at you is, what are the main differences between peacetime and wartime management practices? Um, thank you for this question, Jonathan. But first of all, I need to say thank you for you and for all our friends who connected with us today in this YouTube channel, because you are really big force and we uh, very appreciate your support. And it's very important that our voices, voices of Ukraine, uh, listen to people all around the world. And uh, when we talk about differences between peacetime and wartime management, first of all, the distinction between peacetime and wartime management is profound, as I described in my book, uh, Management in Times of War. In, in wartime, the speed of decision and uh, their execution becomes vitally important. Leaders must adapt quickly and operate uh, in condition of great uncertainty. It's extremely important to recognize that the cost of mistake significantly increase and uh, so does uh, of the value of correct decision too. And in this context, wartime management requires maximum resources mobilization and quick response. In conclusion, wartime experience is invaluable for testing our strategies and our new technologies. Uh, the challenges we faced during the war, while similar to those in peacetime, are much more intense. Therefore, adopting the experience uh, and testing technologies under such conditions can serve as the perfect crash test, uh, preparing us for any future challenges. That's absolutely fascinating. Thank you. And uh... Uh, you've got a copy of the book there. I mean, it looks like a, a beautifully packaged and I can see already, you know, a, a very well promoted book as well. You've got a, a very strong campaign behind it. Um, so I'd like to turn to Roman. I'm really interested to hear about the creation process of the book, uh, Management Times of War. What were the origins of the idea? How did you make that a reality, bring it to life? And also, what's your what's your wider mission here? You know, uh, is it to support Ukrainian uh, business authors alone, um, or is there also an aspect here to to you know help with the Ukrainian cause and, uh, and and increase awareness of it? And I'd love to know about the process of of sort of printing and manufacturing in in, in wartime because I know in the Second World War 
it was quite difficult in Britain. You know, there was there was rationing of raw materials uh, like paper, for instance, that uh, that were needed for the war effort. So, yeah, if you could give me a good idea of, of, of how the project came about and how you've uh, made it into reality. Oh, thank you for your question. You know, um, you are looking in core, um, I suppose I see and I feel uh, uh, about your question, um, as to say about this main idea, um, you know, maybe uh, there is uh, some uh, huge dilemma in all uh, ages uh, between what was first, egg or chicken? Uh, I mean, uh, you know, uh, we have, uh, as as say about author, about Costa, uh, have some ideas, have uh, experience. Uh, have also some views and maybe uh, your aims and targets. Uh, we uh, we have occurred a war in uh, in our state, and uh, it's difficult to uh, to um, figure out what was the force what, and what was the determining uh, factor uh, in order to um, write this book. Uh, I suppose it was the connecting the, do the dots and the uh, suitable moment when Costa eventually decided uh, to, you know, to bring uh, to other people and uh, uh, especially for people abroad, um, the voice, the voice uh, of Ukrainians, of Ukrainian management society, uh, Ukrainian businessmen and uh, Ukrainian authorities from government, uh, his decision um, to uh, write a book and his, you know, uh, his call occurred to me, um, occurred on uh, July uh, 2023 20, and I picked up my phone and he said uh, something like, uh, you know, uh, I uh, already um, graped, if I'm not mistaken, it's uh, so, uh, we have such, um, in Ukrainian, such phrase, uh, it's uh, I grate so for something. If I'm not mistaken, it means uh, when you have fruit from green uh, become red, uh, you you uh, uh, you become uh, and he he became <laughs> uh, uh, he became red uh, with um, you know with his um, ability and with his uh, great uh, passion uh, to share with the world of his uh, insights and intentions. And, uh, you know, uh, one of the core, maybe, um, reason, it's uh, our, with Kostya, our book, uh, his book, uh, with my help, um, Management in Times of War, it's uh, a bit uh, uh, another pack of information and uh, constant um, also, um, you know, telling to the world around about war in Ukraine, but in our own way, in, in the way, in the way how we manage uh, to survive and manage uh, to do uh, really amazing things inside under shelling, under bombing, under a constant pressure of, of the war. And if to say about um, actually publishing, uh, I, I should admit that uh, Kharkiv um, book, um, um, book Factory, they really do amazing work and uh, they are heroes that they manage to uh, every day constant um, risk and shelling. They manage to product books in, uh, you know, in a uh, very big amount, in, in, in big volumes, it's thousands of books. And they allow us as publishers uh, continue publish books and uh, uh, spread them for readers, for Ukrainians and abroad, uh, for foreigners who come here, or maybe when we uh, send it abroad. Uh, that's maybe uh, the main thing I'd like to say, uh, according to your questions. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, the next question is for uh, Konstantin, or can I shorten it to Kostya? Is that okay? Yeah, it's, yes. it's better. It's better. <laughs> so, in so your... because, my, because uh, Jonathan, my, my full name is uh, Konstantin Borisovich Kashelenko, and I think <laughs> it's very long for conversation. <laughs> it is, it is. I mean, formally, I would, I'd use the full name, but yes, I'll use Kostya for uh, for short. Now, in your book, you talk about 
extreme challenge. And of course, there must be many, many of these in wartime. But what for you is the most extreme challenge? I mean, for instance, is it balancing reform versus the war effort? Or are there or there other challenges that are even more extreme than that? Um, thank you for good question, Jonathan. And uh, it's really uh, it's really about reforms and uh, war efforts because uh, as I think uh, and as I refer, refer to is the balancing act between the necessity of reforms and the demands of the war efforts. On the one hand, we need to continue reforms to improve our efficiency, our transparency, and the dig digitalization of our government management. And uh, the key initiatives, uh, the implementation of, as you say, our unified informational system of social sphere that replaces outdated system from 90s. And this new system enables citizens to personally or online via our D application uh, for social services and benefits significantly. And uh, it's very sim simple and uh, it's about automation, automation of the processes and making more transparent and efficient all our system, all social system of the government of the state and of the state. And uh, and the another and the other hand in the state it, it's about state uh, of war requires immediately actions of decisions for country protection. For example, in the first months of the uh, war, uh, when we talk about social benefits, it's not only payments. It's about uh, uh, it's it's about uh, something like confirmation for the citizen that our state is working, our communication system working, our banking system working, etc. It's a really good uh, a way to say for our citizens that uh, everything is work and we need to fight. And uh, uh, in the next month, it's about collaboration with our international partner, United Nations Organization, Red Cross, etc., it, it's about it's about how to connect this organization with Ukrainians, how to uh, support uh, them uh, in their work, uh, important work in Ukraine. And we're working to help uh, our people to return to normal economic life and integrate our internal displaced people into new communities. And uh, balance, balancing of this immediate wartime action and long-term reforms, it's a really a big challenge for me, for my team, and for all our society. Thank you. And uh, this is another one for, for you, Kostya, as well. And you mentioned amongst the projects you're involved in, one is called the Unified Informational System within the social sphere, what really is the role and power of that project uh, within, you know, Ukrainian governments and, and, and of course, society? Oh, it's a really big uh, system, and I can talk about the system in hours, but I think that we need to talk uh, today is very clearly for all people. Uh, first of all, it's about uh, something like ecosystem of subsystem, but most important part of this system is our unified register of all individuals who have received or are eligible to receive social benefits and social services. This register is linked with other government databases, data uh, registers, and ensuring interoperability, verification, and process automation. It's about uh, it's about uh, transparency. It's about a very clear way to make application to the state, and it's about uh, automatic decision. Because uh, when you don't have connection with another state bodies, you don't have uh, important information for make decision. You need to ask this information for the citizen. It's about papers. It's about very uh, subjective decision, and it's not about efficiency. And uh, this changes the way we provide services, making them more efficient and transparent. Furthermore, it's important to note that uh, previously our ministry was associated with small payments that uh, didn't significantly impact people's lives. 
Now we changed this approach by developing social services. Specifically, uh, we are creating an electronic case management subsystem in this big system for social services, which allow us to be more client oriented and ensure effective, effective oversight of social workers activities. This will help us ensure that every citizen receives their necessary help and support. And as a follow-up question to that, I mean, it must be incredibly challenging at this time. How does the development, you know, the techniques of management that, that you've been writing about, how does good management deal with shortages, disruptions, and the kind of attacks on infrastructure that you uh, mentioned earlier on in our conversation? Oh, I think uh, that uh, leadership is start uh, when you have a shortage of resources and the good management in the face of shortages disruptions and attacks of our in our on our infrastructure is based on some several key um, principles and uh, in first it's essential to ensure robust logistic and backup system it's a, it's a base and uh, it's our main in, main goals in the first day of the war and the main goals now uh, it's about uh, responses to any interruption, interruptions and uh, uh, we can be swift. Second, it's important to have a clear emergency action plan, allowing the, all our team to know their roles and responsibilities. And, uh, and the third, it's uh, maintaining continuously communication. It's not only communication with the team, and it's com it's about communication with uh, external partners. It's about communication with another government body, and this is very crucial. Uh, so that information about current changes, current challenges, and decision is accessible to all stakeholders. And when you have connection with all stakeholders, you have possibility to uh, to move very fast. And finally, efficient, effective uh, management involves flexibility and ability to quickly adopt our strategies uh, according to changing uh, circumstances. That's fantastic. Yes, it must be an incredible challenge there. Well, I'm going to fire my next question uh, to Roman because um, the publishing industry in Ukraine is something I'm especially uh, interested in. I meet a lot of Ukrainian writers in, in London. Um, of you know fiction translations and all sorts i mean what's your experience uh, of being able to maintain and sustain your publishing business uh, during uh, wartime and what strategic goals have you set yourself for your publishing house uh, in these times because there must be numerous uh, challenges um, thank you for your question uh, you know uh, the first months of um, total invasion, we had uh, somehow uh, uh, it looks like uh, looked like uh, a shutdown uh, while COVID emerged. Um, first months is uh, everything, every uh, bookshop, every publisher. We uh, stopped our actions, our work, and you know um, maybe the first um, the first push. Uh, was uh, in in summer uh, 2022 when I was emailed by uh, one of the biggest uh, book networks, bookshop networks uh, called Yakabu, when they uh, texted me, uh, hey there, we are working already, we are selling our books, and you know, it was the first uh, push to me, it was uh, the first message, um, powerful message that um we should revive we should resume our uh, activity and uh, uh, in couple of months on october if i'm, I'm not in, uh, mistaken the first author called me and uh, asked to publish his book and it was called um, food balance philosophy of um, uh, of health life and we successfully published this book and it was you know revival uh, revival um, of uh, of uh, publishing as uh, the great uh, maybe uh, push of energy and uh, hope that uh, nothing 
uh, nothing uh, lost, nothing is lost and not so bad. Even if even uh, there are authors and there are e readers which uh, during the war want uh, to read, uh, there is a demand um, and, uh, and a desire to do it. And if to say about um, as the next steps, about maybe 2023, uh, you know, uh, I saw that um, uh, book market, uh, the interest uh, to books, uh, the activity of readers, they are constantly growing in Ukraine. And it's amazing. It's cool signs that we can uh, do, we, we may do, we may create such uh, cool books uh, uh, like book uh, um, Kostya by Kostya management in times of war uh, and you know um, if to tell about the uh, second part of your uh, question you mentioned uh, goals and strategic uh, targets yes um, you know uh, I I'd say that um, uh, I have some dream. I have a dream to create um, some environment, environment something like uh, the uh, new generation of electronic books. Uh, what I mean with that, I call it quest book, because you know uh, when you have a book, whether it's paper, a sheet, or maybe a sheet in in your on your screen. It's just um, a text uh, in which you absorb for your brain as uh, food uh, in some passive way. Uh, you take it uh, as theoretical material. And only if you have a great purpose and great um, ability and you want uh, to implement what you read, then it becomes a sense, some, uh, some um, essence for action, yes? But still, I, I suppose that a book can be something more in this core value. A book can, can include, uh, if it is non-fiction book, if it is book about self-improvement, self-enhancement, self in, in some parts of book can be um, made in some way, uh, in a um, way of test, way of quiz, way of uh, some... Um, uh, in interaction between reader and author, between readers each self, uh, there can be ability to read an alternative um, alternative branch of uh, of plot of your uh, fiction book, and so on. There are a lot of possibilities, and now technology can, um, I I suppose, can allow us to make such an app such an environment where reader can be can interact in gamification way with book and it's my dream to uh, maybe to create or maybe to dive into such blue ocean if to say in business uh, terminology terminology uh, that can be a blue ocean in reading in uh, publishing and i dream about that it's my you know uh, the greatest maybe goal for for to for today and which with which I uh, wake up every day and I uh, you know appreciate my work what I do uh, because I have such a great uh, goal. So thank you uh, for a uh, possibility to to tell uh, for your audience about such a, uh, a dream. Thank you. Well, I think what you mentioned there is incredibly important. It's about uh, having a purpose, a sense of purpose. And without a sense of purpose, it's very difficult to set goals and achieve them. So this is a question for uh, for Kostya. How do management purpose and especially efficiency in delivering on that purpose help keep the Ukrainian economy resilient in times of war? Um, thank you. It's a really good question for different Ukrainian managers because... Uh, uh, we have in one hand uh, joint purpose, joint vision uh, to save our country, to defend our country. And uh, on another hand, different businesses, different companies have different purposes. And uh, uh, in any businesses, efficient efficiency, I think that purpose and efficiency play a key role in maintaining economic resilience. When management is focused on clearly, fine, clearly defining purpose, it's uh, direct the entire organization or system 
towards achieving specific goals, uh, fostering unity of the team, motivation, and accountability. accountability. And uh, this uh, approach allows to better resource utilization, minimization of waste, and uh, greater returns of, on efforts. And efficiency, on the other hand, uh, ensures that the resources are used optimally, and uh, which is crucial for supporting uh, stability and growth in the economy, especially under condition of limited resources or economic challenges. Uh, when leadership focuses on efficiency, it uh, seeks ways to improve processes, reduce costs, and uh, increase productivity, which in turn helps the economy to be more resilient to external shock and challenges. That's uh, why what I think about that. Fantastic. And uh, very much sort of leading on from there is the question of how important then is it to align other people with that common purpose, both within government, but also, um, you know, in society as well, the media and so on. How important is it to have alignment to understand what the threat it is you're facing? I mean, it would seem fairly clear, of course, but I know Russian disinformation can can muddle things up a little bit. It can make people kind of confused and it tries to break that sort of common purpose and threat. And uh, I think uh, I think that a shared purpose and understanding of threats are key to team cohesion and efficiency. And I need to, to say widely, it's not only about team, it's about all governments, it's about all people. And uh, it's, uh, it aids uh, in quick response to challenges and effective resource utilization. Unity of the people and the team to develop and implement uh, joint strategies and enhancing the ability to counter threats. And that's why I work with my team regularly to talk about our challenges, to talk about our goals. And in the next week, we will plan to make something like a kickoff meeting to talk about all our targets in this year with our team, with our partners, with our very close partners. It's very, very close uh, meetings with partners to, uh, to align our vision and uh, to make, uh, you know, something like uh, radical transparency. Uh, principles of uh, Ray Dalio is one of my important books, and I think that radical transparency is a very efficient way to be always clear with your team, with your partners, and it's very efficient to and it's 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 very supportive for all members, to all stakeholders to be in one page and to make together something great. Thank you. And what I found really fascinating, uh, because as I was saying before we hit record, I came to Lviv to run an event uh, in August of last year. And what really struck me was, despite wartime, there's huge construction and there's a lot of businesses being created, a lot of businesses also transferring from uh, from the east to the sort of Lviv area. Um, and a lot of these are technology-based and looking at the economic figures, it seems that technology is providing some extraordinary kind of cushion or growth to the Ukrainian economy, which is absolutely crucial, of course, to maintain the war effort. So in your view, what is the role of technology now in wartime, but also for the economy and for Ukraine's future development after the war? Jonathan, thank you for details about marathons. I think uh, that you see in my wall uh, some medals. I, I don't look uh, like marathoner because uh, I don't have a, for, uh, a good regime today and I have uh, some problems with uh, food and my days and my nights and my agenda. I think that uh, like uh, most Ukrainians, I work in 12 on or, or uh, 15, 12 or 15 hours in the day and it's not good uh, regime for make a good sport results 
But I think that uh, morning jogging is uh, very important to all of us because it's not only about sport, it's about uh, our mental health, it's about ability to stay stronger in this really difficult circumstances. And when we talk about technologies, I need to say that Ukraine had a very developed gap tech sector focused on uh, citizen convenience and Simba. It's embodying the state in smartphone concept, uh, initiative of the President Zelensky program. And uh, this enabled us to quickly adapt these uh, technologies to new challenges related to security and resilience in war times. I think uh, you know when in normal life you use online services for the, for the citizen, it's about it's about uh, uh, it's about convenience. But in the times of war, when you use smartphone to be connected with the states, and when you is in the basement or in the bomb shelter, it's not only about convenience, it's about safety of your family, of your kids. Uh, and uh, that's why we uh, built first, first our service in times of war, it's a service of registration of internal displaced people. We we has uh, registered uh, five million people, and a third of them uh, use the smartphone, not uh, not offline offices. And it's only one example. We have a lot of examples. It's only one in my sphere, and it's a product of my team. And the uh, can, and uh, this partners in partnership with Ministry of Digital. Uh, transformation. And uh, I think that we have not only preserved existing services, but also expanded their functionality to ensure safety and uh, support for the citizen. Uh, it's uh, thus uh, the tech sector continues to evolve, ensuring not only uh, convenience, but also security and the strength of the state. And not only straight strength of the state, but uh, it's about connectiveness with our port partners, because as uh, Dennis Brown, United Nations representative in Ukraine, say that uh, it's the first experience for United Nations to use Ukrainian uh, system is our unified social register as a system for payments, for cash payments for uh, citizen uh, from uh, World Food Program from UNICEF and another big uh, humanitarian organization and NGOs. Thank you. That's incredibly innovative. And um, where is the key locations? I mean, is innovation happening everywhere in Ukraine or is it Lviv and Kiev that are becoming critical areas for you know high-tech industry and high-tech skills to uh, to be based? Um, yes, uh, we have uh, some big hubs, and it's about Lviv, it's about Kharkiv, it's about even Kharkiv in this time, and it's about uh, Kiev and uh, Zaporizhia too, and uh, our IT workforce is very decentralized, you know, and uh, in the first uh, day of the war, uh, some part of, uh, of my team work here in Kiev. But some part of my team work in Lviv, in some small villages around the around the uh, Kiev and in the West Ukraine, and it's not problem because all we have uh, laptops, we have internet infrastructure, L LTE LTE connection, etc., and that's why we can collaborate and make something together. And uh, in Ukraine, we joke that. Uh, COVID uh, pandemic for us, it's something like preparing for the war. Because you remember that COVID is for, for, for many of us, it's our first experience to use Zoom, to use, uh, uh, to use uh, uh, your, to, to make your job from the home, from the another places, et cetera. And that's why we can work from very different places. And now I know that some uh, part of the IT community work uh, from abroad. Some part of our IT community work together in Kyiv. 
and for us it's it's not it's not a problem we can uh, decentralization it's it's our power and i think that we need to uh, cultivate this and uh, mm, i think that's very important to say that our community enriched by both locals and international talents here in kiev because a lot of humanitarian partners a lot of big friends of ukraine volunteers comes to Kiev, come to Lviv, and we can collaborate and make uh, something together. You know that some Ukrainian technologists use it in some European countries today. Here in Ministry of Social Policy, we build some really brilliant solution, and that's why we have some awards from European organization like uh, uh, Zero Project. Uh, it's about people with disability and uh, in, in Friday, in this Friday, we have uh, our in this uh, in this really big organization, and we uh, build some uh, international solution. For example, our system of registration humanitarian aid. It's a very important system, not only Ukraine, maybe for another countries too. And we very open to share our experience. We very open to make something together for worldwide society, not only for Ukraine, because uh, a, a modern world is uh, very comp very complicated. And the modern world, it's uh, not VUCA, VUCA world. It's something like next stage. And I think that only united, only together, we can build uh, some solution for modern world, world to be, to, to build our Govern our states, our governments, our uh, international society more peaceful and more uh, connected in the some uh, important co common common values. For example, values of the freedom, values of the democracy, and uh, that's why we don't we don't we don't uh, think on, think only about. Uh, today. We think about uh, tomorrow too. Thank you. And I'd like to pick up on, on the point you made there and really turn back to this idea of uh, sort of uh, management and governance. In wartime, there must be things that accelerate and there must be things that slow down and become much more difficult. So what's your experience been of the impact of war on certain aspects of management and governance? Oh, Jonathan, thank you. That's why I, I read my I, I wrote my book, because every day from the first day of the war, I asked me, Kostya, what you need to do more efficiently? What you need to not do? What you need to do with your project, with your team? Uh, and uh, what and 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 uh, uh, and I think about my lessons. I think about how I I want how I will be more efficient uh, tomorrow. And I think not only about my ministry, my zone of responsibility. I think about another people too. How they operate this uh, circumstance and how they move forward. And that's why I. Uh, I uh, I uh, I uh, talk to some Ukrainian and national experts to share their experience in my book. And uh, this is people from Ukrposta uh, CEO, for example, Igor Smelyansky. This is people from uh, banking, uh, for example, CEO of uh, Bank Pivdeni from Odessa. This is uh, guys and girls from different spheres, from uh, logistic and uh, services to uh, via upon trading, etc. And uh, some of uh, these, uh, some of problems and some of solution, uh, it's it's very connected. And uh, in wartime, we make decision faster, but uh, there can be issues with resources. And due to the war, some of our projects are paused because all resources uh, go to the urgent need. Uh, I have a zero budget in the spring uh, 2022. 
and also things uh, can be harder due to the major infrastructure around us and uh, due to uh, people with uh, PTSD uh, around us too. And uh, when we talk about resources, we um, we fix this. And uh, it's uh, about partners. It's about not only big partners like United Nations Organization, Ukrainian NGO, Deloitte, for example, and another company. It's about volunteers too. Volunteers from France, for USA, for Latvia, who uh, connect with us and who support us with uh, uh, hardware, with software, with uh, really uh, important uh, ad ad advan uh, advices and uh, uh, sharing their experience, etc. And uh, that's why I think that our our biggest uh, resource it's unity. When we are together, we always can to we, we always try to uh, to make a decision together and we always try to uh, make a good result and i think uh, that it's 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 our it's it's our main result uh, and uh, it's uh, it's it's not only a result of ukrainians i think it's a result of big network of uh, supporters of ukraine like you jonathan who connect uh, all of us around different shared targets. It's not only targets to save Ukraine. It's about target to uh, it's 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 target to save Ukrainians too. It's it's a target to support Ukraine. It's a target to block uh, Russia with sanctions, for example. It's a target to block Russia uh, Russia forces, etc. etc. Different uh, targets, different but it's all around uh, it, it, but it's all around the uh, uh, joint values and uh, it's about it's about peace it's about freedom it's about democracy and your your answer uh, thank you so much for that answer and it really uh, sort of stimulates this idea that russian aggression is not just directed at ukraine and it's not just military aggression, it's multi-front aggression, information warfare, uh, it is foreign relations warfare, it's lawfare using uh, you know, international law against open societies like ours. So this is a question for Aman. How can good management help us to become you know, more resilient against multi-front Russian aggression? Um, thanks for <clears throat> such a question. Uh, you know, um, uh, to answer this question, I uh, maybe uh, should look uh, into my uh, past. Uh, previously, before uh, I became a publisher, I was uh, for a long time a corporate secretary, a lawyer, and uh, I worked uh, a lot of time uh, in banks. Uh, and you know, um, one maybe um, the interest, the most interest uh, part of my corporate secretary practice uh, was uh, during my work uh, for two years in Nova Posta, in our uh, brilliant um, delivery delivery ecosystem, uh, uh, express delivery ecosystem, uh, and. Uh, uh, by the way, during working there, I wrote my first uh, book about corporate, actually corporate uh, governance in Ukraine, uh, called the "Ultimate Beneficiary." Uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, what uh, what I want to say, uh, we uh, during maybe uh, starting from twenty uh, tens, we uh, tried. Uh, I mean, we uh, our business, our uh, businessmen, our managers. We tried uh, to uh, implement uh, the best practices of corporate governance uh, worldwide, European and maybe um, from USA, UK. Uh, and <clears throat> we tried to enhance our structure, our uh, way of thinking, our uh, mindset, our business mindset. And what I should uh, say and what I'm proud about, uh, you know, it's about our businessmen. 
uh, truly we have a genuine, genuine um, businessman in our country and uh, uh, they can make uh, business then can they can, they can uh, make structures they can uh, build networks and uh, then they can uh, whether uh, make import, uh, then make export, and uh, uh, you know <clears throat> there is a very wide uh, expression in Latin uh, language that uh, pecunia nervus belli. In uh, in uh, English, it's um, money is the nerve of war. Yes, indeed, uh, money are very uh, is very important, and our business. Um, maybe it, it is one of a resilience factor why we stand so long and we'll, we stand so strong and we will uh, win eventually. We will have a um, victory because we have a core DNA of inter entrepreneurship in our veins, Ukrainians. We, we, uh, we can earn money, we can generate cash flow, we can um, create value by our, our business. And you know what uh, our brilliant businessman showed during the war, that our business can follow the citizens even when then they run abroad, we, uh, when they are um, refugees, yes? And our Nova Posta uh, and other businesses, uh, they followed our citizens and uh, Mm, they uh, give them serves that uh, that uh, that services that they gave in Ukraine, and they um, by this by these uh, actions they also um, manage to uh, collect uh, a more uh, funds funds abroad uh, in order to fight Russian aggression in order to fi finance our army and finance our well-being in Ukraine. And it's a brilliant example that uh, we can manage, we can do business. Uh, and it's maybe in our DNA what I suppose Russians uh, doesn't have. Russians do not have sense. In addition, I need, in addition, I need to say that uh, Marina Avdeeva is the CEO of Ukrainian insurance company, mm -hmm. Arsenal. Uh, may, may make a contribution to this book. And I think it's really amazing. Working insurance business in times of yeah, war. I agree. I, I don't learn about it in MBA or in my university. It's really something about something new example for a new world and uh, for new difficult circumstances for all of us in this world. And I think that this is examples is very useful because before of be, before the big war it's something new for me that bankers can work in times of war that insurance company can work in times can can work in times of war that logistics post service logistics, the, the yes. post service service and uh, communication works too and uh, it's, it's it's i think that it's uh, uh, very important component of resilience. And of course, that's important for any Western uh, donors or business looking to invest in Ukraine. And it's an extraordinarily powerful and an interesting business there. And talking of, of Western partners, I'm really fascinated in uh, your experience, Roman, in taking books like this and actually promoting them, not just within Ukraine, but as Kosti was saying, try to get this knowledge out to as big an audience as possible. So in your experience, you know, how are you using that to, to mark and promote and, uh, you know, hopefully increase the audience for this book um, in overseas markets in, uh, you know, Western Europe, US, Britain, etc.? It's a, a question to me, yes, uh, as I understand. I, okay, uh, thank you, Jonathan. Uh, you know, uh, to tell the truth um, <clears throat> uh, about my, uh, my own experience, uh, you know, I, I should say that um, I learned very good uh, to create a um, valuable and uh, quality uh, product, uh, such as books, my own books, uh, or such books of authors who came who came to me and who um, 
Oh, who uh, доверяю? Who um, uh, rely rely on me mm -hmm. and that I will do uh, the best product from their uh, their intellectual uh, expression in in written. Um, yes, and I managed that. Um, and now you know I am on my very important stage of uh, personal um, uh, development. I am now um, uh, learning to market it, to promote it, to sell it, to get it to readers. Um, and uh, with Costas Books, uh, actually, it's it's the first attempt to uh, uh, to knock, you know, to knock to the broad to to doors to the broader audience, to the whole world, to Canada, to USA, to UK, to Australia, to Europe and sense to Costa, it's a, you know a, a great boost for me. A great, if if to not say in a, in a very sophisticated way, it's a, a kick uh, of my can. Yes, <laughs> how they they say um, Costa forced me to do it, to think about it, and uh, I will uh, also maybe repeat my uh, our core. Um, core uh, message to the world we we try to repack in some another way uh, not very um, uh, common way uh, how to say about again to say about Russian aggression about aggression to democracy about war in Ukraine in the way of book in the way of our uh, managing to do things inside uh, when we are struggling, when we are in crisis, but we still manage, we still uh, do amazing thing in um, technology ways for government. We still publish books. Um, try to imagine it. It's uh, something for me, even me as author and uh, publisher, that uh, our citizens, Ukrainians, started be uh, began to read more. They began to read more nowadays, and uh, uh, you know, um, it's uh, it's amazing scene and it's cool scene. And uh, I suppose uh, this, I hope this this um, current this um, will will only uh, will uh, extend this current. Um, so thanks, yes. Thank you. Um, and in, in addition, I need to say that it's it's great that we are not uh, alone in this journey. And thank you, Jonathan, for your communication support. And thanks for support for our 40 contributors for this book. Because uh, half of them, uh, not from Ukraine, but from another different uh, countries, 12 another countries, and all of them support us to connect us to society in different countries. And many bloggers support us, and uh, some users, not only users of, uh, not only customers of Amazon, but users of uh, Goodreads uh, social network support us too to make some uh, to to make some interaction with our book. To write, uh, to write some reviews, write some issues about book. It's it's really very important. Now we have some negotiations with the uh, with publishers in the United States, in Canada. I think uh, that we not only uh, distribute this book via our Ukrainian книга dot biz dot ua store and not only by via amazon but uh, via traditional uh, publisher in, uh, in other countries and now we have two uh, language edition ukrainian and uh, english edition i think that english edition is better because i'm not professional author but in english edition we work together with uh, seven different proofreaders and use some uh, new technologies of AI translation and uh, hard proof proofreading after that, etc., etc. That's why I think that English edition really better than Ukrainian. <laughs> I can confirm that. Well, I haven't read the Ukrainian one, but of course I've got a, an early proof copy uh, which I use to prepare for for this interview. And uh, yes, I mean it's it's written in wonderful English. It's very sort of clear and. 
readable. Uh, and of course, there's lots of really interesting information. And this is the last question, but it leads very well onto that. Um, and this is in terms of you write about sort of resilience. Uh, you write about the importance of resilience in governance and management. How transferable are these skills outside of wartime to other situations like disasters, pandemics, uh, various crises and emergencies? Um, is this an important management book, in your view, for people everywhere because of these transferable insights? Very good, good question. Really good question, Jonathan. Thank you. Uh, I think that management skills are indeed uh, like a Swiss army knife in the world of leadership. And they are very apl applicable uh, in different situations, in situation of war, in the crisis, na natural disasters, economic downturns, for example, or pandemic, all of us remember this uh, COVID. And uh, these skills help us to adapt and find solution in the most unexpected circumstances to deepen your understanding of these tools. I recommend uh, reading my book, uh, Management in Times of War, and I also invite you to join uh, our LinkedIn group where we can discuss uh, about management challenges and share experience together. And if I may, Jonathan, I will add uh, <clears throat> something to Costa's answer. Uh, we gathered um, expressions and we specifically asked uh, our contributors, especially from, from abroad, um, about their management insights during some crisis uh, events, uh, crisis situations, and they also answered and there there you will find in in the book some examples uh, for example who how they managed uh, to uh, to um, conduct their business or can uh, or lead their teams during covid who said abroad how they did it uh, there there is a story with uh, one guy who managed uh, to survive uh, to tell it during the Chinese invasion into Hong Kong and so on. So we, we, tell, we tell about our management inside and in, in terms of uh, war inside Ukraine, but still we gather some uh, very valuable um, insights, ideas, and, uh, it, uh, um, and also uh, pr pr uh, suggestions from our contributors, which they also uh, had in their lives and uh, it it was a huge um, huge amount uh, of valuable contribution from them and also i i can ask uh, i can uh, say thanks uh, a lot to them for uh, you know um, fulfillment of this book with uh, with more sense more value and more um, good and um, wide content well, that's fantastic. I mean, I uh, again, I'll uh, reiterate that the audience should really check this book out and uh, try to get their hands on a copy of it. I'm incredibly grateful to you. I know you're both extremely busy, and I'm very grateful you're able to speak to me on the weekend about this. It's a, a great honor and privilege to be able to hear your, your insights uh, and to bring them to my audience as well. And I know that everyone watching this uh, is hugely behind Ukraine and supportive of Ukrainian victory. And I was in London yesterday for the uh, rallies for the second anniversary of the invasion. There were many, many thousands of people there, uh, Ukrainians and British people uh, united in wishing you a speedy victory and to end the suffering and aggression as soon as possible. Um, so thank you so much. Slava Ukrainian. Heroin <laughs> Slava. And thank you very much, Jonathan, for your support. Thank you for this brilliant discussion. And uh, thank you for your time in this Sunday evening. It's really important to talk uh, about situation in Ukraine, to talk about how we uh, manage uh, all this, uh, uh, all this, uh, we click. <laughs> <laughs> all this hard situation and all this hard uh, project projects and uh, and challenges and uh,
Thank you for that and keep in touch. Keep in touch. Thank you.